bless you. We greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you for worshiping with us this morning. The scripture declares that this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed are those who trust in him. Thank you for worshiping with us on today. We greet you and welcome you. Those who are watching virtually, we welcome you into the virtual sanctuary and into our virtual space and ask you to just worship the Lord with us and celebrate the goodness and the greatness, the graciousness of our God as we prepare to worship. This is the worship of the Beth Eden Church family. We are located at 1125 East Redbird Lane, Dallas, Texas, 75241. Thank you again for worshiping with us and we welcome you, those who are in person and those who are virtual, we welcome you. God bless you for being here today and we know that you will be tremendously and immensely blessed. There, there's uh, so much that we should pray for and as we prepare to worship, uh, we, we acknowledge those who are standing in need of prayer and those who are on our prayer requests, we acknowledge them as we prepare to worship. If you will stand, those who are in person, we're standing and then we're preparing now uh, for scripture and for prayer. Pray for those who are coming for scripture and for prayer. Good morning. Our scripture reading is Psalms 100. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his court with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endured to all generations. May the Lord bless the reading of the scripture. Let us all bow. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord God Almighty, Father, we thank you. We thank you because you've been such a good God. Father, you watch over us, you protect us, you keep us. No one else can do what you do, God. So we thank you. Thank you for your darling son, Jesus, who hung, bled, and died on Calvary's cross for our sins. He who knew no sins took on the sins of the world. And he humbly hung, bled, and died on that cross. But Father, I'm glad the story doesn't end there. Because early on Sunday morning, he got up from that barber tomb with all power of heaven and earth in his hands. And he is now sitting at the right hand of you, Heavenly Father, as the intercessor between holy God and sinful man. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for the intercession. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for your darling son, Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for your Holy Spirit that dwells in the heart of every baptized believer. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for your word. Your word is truth. It endures to all generations. Your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light to our path. Let us go forward in this worship service, Lord, thanking you in advance for what you're going to do, loving you, Lord, for all you have done, and, Lord God, looking forward to more and more time with you as we go through this day and every day. This we ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Say bless. 
There's a light in a dark land Since thou hast placed in thy heart All the Lord's command He set thee above nations And cast thy enemies away He's standing here within me So let me hear you say There's a light in a dark land Since thou hast placed in thy heart All the Lord's command He set thee up of nations And cast thy enemies away He's standing there within me So let me hear you say We're blessed We're blessed when we come and when we go The we're, blessed the we're blessed when we're blessed we come blessed and when we go. When we yeah, go. we cast down every stronghold. For the devil is defeated. The devil is defeated. We are Listen, late in the midnight hour, God's gonna turn it around. He's gonna work in your favor. Like you just don't care if you're gonna be blessed anyhow. Somebody say, Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, I'm telling you, ladies. How many of you know God's gonna turn that thing around, leg in the midnight hour? Yeah. Y'all believe that? Yeah. Do you really believe it? Yeah. If you really know God's gonna turn that thing around, give a Lord a praise. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. I don't know what you're dealing with, but just know God's gonna turn it around for you. Yeah. And once he turns that thing around, you're gonna say, Lord, it's so amazing. God fix it for you and say, Lord, what an amazing thing you did. Yes. God, it was so amazing. I can see how you was going to do it, but you did it.
Come on, God is amazing God. Come on, y'all. Come on. Yeah, come on. Come on, tell him thank you. Come on, come on. Yeah. Come on, let us keep worshiping our great and amazing God. He's good, isn't he? just never ceases to amaze us. Come on, wherever you are, just worship him. Just worship him in person, virtually. Just worship him. Take a moment and just worship him. He's a great and amazing God. There is none like him. No one like him. Over and over again, he keeps proving himself. God is a great God. He's an awesome God. Now, Father and our God, how we love you, how we praise you, how we thank you, we magnify your name. What a great and amazing God you are. You've even declared of yourself that there is no one else beside me. And we concur, Lord, that you are great and greatly to be praised. And there are no other gods that are comparable to you. Thank you, Lord, for this great worship experience. Thank you for the opportunity that is ours, that you've given us to share together. Speak afresh, speak anew. I decrease that you may increase, allow the Holy Spirit to have his perfect preaching and teaching ministry so that lives are changed, so that we would not be the same again. Get the praise, get the glory, and give us the blessings. Meet every need now, we pray. For it is in the name that is above every name. That sweet, strong name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, we pray. Thank the Lord. Amen. Amen. Come on and put those hands together and let's give our great and amazing God praise. Isn't he worthy of the praise? Amen. We praise and thank our God for all of his marvelous and magnificent blessings. How many of you all are blessed today? You blessed. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. God bless you. We're going right to the word on today. We want to lift a passage of scripture from the 91st Psalm, the 91st Psalm. I want to return back to this Psalm again. Uh, there are several Psalms that um, I love and appreciate. But this one uh, specifically is one that, that uh, we all should appreciate. I, would, I will begin with verse 1, 
and uh, I'll read a few verses, then I will move to uh, the latter part. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. For it is he who delivers you from the snare of the trapper and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions or his feathers and under his wings you may seek refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and a bulwark. Skip down to verse 9. For you have made the Lord my refuge, even the most high your dwelling place. No evil will befall you, nor will any plague come near your tent. For he will give his angels charge concerning you to guard you in all your ways. Thank you for standing. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God stands forever. This is the word of the Lord for the people of the Lord everywhere, and the people of God said amen. I want to preach and teach from the, from the lesson or the title, The Promise of Protection. The Promise of Protection. The Promise of protection. We are continuing the series of sermons on God's promises and today we are considering the promise of God's protection. Brothers and sisters, the Christian faith rests on a foundation of God's promises. We can trust unswervingly and unequivocally in the promises of our Heavenly Father because his word is true, his word is faithful, his word is loving, and his word is powerful. The Apostle Paul writes in 2 Corinthians 1 and 20, for all the promises of God in him are yes in him and amen to the glory of God through us. We have preached and taught the promises, the promise of God's provision, the promise of answered prayer. In this message, we will present the promise of his protection. The promise of God's protection is an important and precious promise. It is a glorious promise. My brothers and sisters, it is a fact and a truth that we live in a time of crime, danger, evil, evil, evil doers, trouble, tragedy, trauma, and wickedness. To ensure protection from danger and crime, some people bear arms. That means they carry, Amen. some openly. Amen. Some people have home security systems. We have car alarms and other security features. Security and safety measures are employed as a protection is maximized and the threat of danger and evil is minimized. These safety and security measures are needed and welcomed. But for the believer in Jesus Christ, we realize that God is our ultimate and sovereign protector. We realize and understand that no one can do and no one can keep us like God can. Philip Yancey stated, a God wise enough to create me and the world I live in is wise enough to watch out for me. Psalm 91 is an encouragement and reminder of the wisdom, protection, provision, and provision of our great and sovereign God. 
The problem regarding this text and God's protection is that presumably we know people that rather people who have presumably been faithful. Yet they have been faithful, but they have experienced and suffered from disease, disaster, or danger. Brothers and sisters, following God does not guarantee or exempt us from experiencing difficulties, hard, problematic, or traumatic experiences. An easy, trouble-free, pain-free life is not the subject of this psalm. Safety is. Can I repeat that one more time for you? An easy, trouble-free, pain-free life is not the subject of this psalm. Safety is. Psalm 91 contains both a wisdom psalm verses 1 through 13, and a divine oracle in verses 14 through 16. The wisdom psalm encourages believers in God and Christians throughout history to pursue the path of godliness and holds out the many promises of God's protection and blessings. The Lord renews the, the promises to those who love and trust him in this text. Gift G. Mona, in the essence of faith, stated, faith is a symbol of recognition of God's protection upon your life. Faith is a symbol of recognition of God's protection upon your life, she states. The Archbishop and theologian Francois Fenelon stated, we sleep in peace in the arms of God when we yield ourselves up to his providence. We sleep in peace in the arms of God when we yield ourselves up to his providence. Psalm 91 encourages and reminds us, first of all, that we have a place of shelter. As believers in Jesus Christ, as Christians, it is good to know that we have a place of shelter. When the storms of life are raging and fear is assailing, we have a safe place by which we can go to. And this text is an assurity and an assurance of that truth that we can go to a shelter and a safe place. The first verse mentions here as it is in between Psalm 90 and Psalm 92, probably a Psalm of Moses. He says to us, he or she who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide under or uh, in the shadow of the Almighty. He who dwells in the shelter. KJB renders that the secret place. There is a shelter for us. There is a secret place for us. Life is going to give us some storms. As a matter of fact, brothers and sisters, uh, this week and this weekend, storms are in the forecast. And if you are like I am, when the storms of life and when the storms, uh, meteorolo meteorologically speaking, are raging, we turn on the TV, on our phone, on the radio, and we will hear the meteorologists say that there's a storm going on, and now is the time to go to your safe place. Now is the time to go into a place of 
security, a place of safety where you can find solace and be, be taken care of. Life, I said, and I'll reemphasize, will give you some times of struggle and some times of storms. And when they come, it's good to know that you have a safe place. When the enemy comes, it's good to know that you have a safe place. Where is that safe place? That shelter is in God. The psalmist declares in the 23rd Psalm that the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to, he makes me to stand by the waters. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley and the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for you are with me. We have a shelter, we have a safe place, we have a secret place. And that secret place is in God. You know, they, we sang a hymn a long time ago. We don't sing those type of hymns too much. But the hymn uh, simply says, Oh, that I knew the secret place where I might find my God. I'd spread my woes before his face and spread shadow my, my sins abroad. You know, I thought about that. My dad used to sing it, and I thought about that during the course of this sermon. And I said, you know, I know the secret place. If you don't know it, you all, you'll know it today. <laughs> that secret place is not some local domicile. That secret place is not just some residence where you can go. That secret place is in God. And you can find refuge in the Most High God. 1 Chronicles 29, 11, yours, the Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and majesty and the splendor for everything in heaven and earth is yours. Yours, the Lord, is the kingdom. You are exalted as head over all. Why can we go to him? Because he is the God most high. And I think I ought to remind you, there is no one else like our sovereign God. That's the reason why he can protect us, he can keep us, he can guard and garrison us like no one else can. We have a shelter and it is in him. Yes, our sovereign Lord, it is you who have made the heavens and the earth and by your great power out and outstretched arm Nothing is too hard for you. Jeremiah 32, 17. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. Psalm 145 and 3. For no word from God will ever fail. Luke 1, 37. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come. The Almighty says, Revelation 1 and 8, I'm declaring to you that there is no God like our God. And someone here today should testify that God has kept me all of my days. How has he kept us? Under the shadow of the Almighty. Under the shadow of God, we have been kept. That means under his complete control, under his complete auspices, under his complete care, has he kept us. No one has done it like our God has. And we can celebrate a God who keeps us. We can celebrate a God who has taken care of us because we have a shelter. We have a secret place. We have a hiding place. We have a place where we can go when there are storms, when the enemy is raging, when there are issues and vicissitudes in our life. We can go to that secret place. He who dwells 
in the shelter of the Almighty. Dwelling suggests taking up residence under the shelter and provision, protection of our great God. Go to him. So not only do we have a place of shelter, secondly, we have a refuge and a fortress. Brothers and sisters, we have a refuge and a fortress. Notice what the psalmist says in verse 2 as he makes a clear confession and declaration of confidence. Look at it with me. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my strength. The psalmist makes a clear confession of confidence and says, I will say of the Lord. We need some Christians, some believers who will testify just like the psalmist that I will say of the Lord. I will make a bold confession. I will make a declaration that it is the Lord. There may be those who might think and suggest that they have made it or they are protected by their series of alarm systems or by carrying their weapons or by their own devices and their own uh, ways and methods. But we understand that it is God who has taken care of us. It is he who is our our refuge and our fortress. I will say of the Lord that he is our strength, our refuge, and our fortress. Martin Luther stated, a mighty fortress is our God, a bulwark never failing. Our helper he is, and the floods of mortal ills prevailing. We can go to him for he is our refuge. Refuge, brothers and sisters, suggests a place of security and safety from harm and danger. A refuge, again, suggests a place of security and a place of safety from harm and from danger. These metaphorical expressions indicate that it is God who takes care of us. It is God who protects and keeps us us and we can go to him. This text corresponds with Psalm 46 which is another one of my favorite Psalms. God is our refuge and strength and ever present help in the time of trouble. Suggested therein that text mean that when life gives us some confined and constricted spaces and places it is God God who is our refuge and our strength. I didn't put it in my notes to ask you, but it is in my head. Am I preaching to anyone, both virtually and in person, who would testify that down through the years, the Lord has kept me. He has protected me. Even when I couldn't protect myself, he has shielded me from dangers that are seen and those that have been unseen. Deuteronomy 33, 27, the eternal God is our refuge and in his everlasting arms uh, we, are un we are under. Psalm 62 and 8, trust in him at all times, you people. Pour out your hearts before him, for God is our refuge. Psalm 18 and 2, the Lord is my rock and my fortress. My God in him I trust. This psalm um, now in these verses suggests that when you have confidence in God, you place your trust in him, knowing that he will not fail you, knowing that he will not let you down. But I, I, I hear you, I hear you. you. You're raising the question and you're saying, but pastor, there are times that I've had some issues in my life. 
There are times that I've had issues and crises, and I've seen others who were believers, presumably, I believe they loved God, but yet they had diseases, yet some of them died. Yes, I, I know I've you're saying there are those who love God, but they've experienced trauma and drama in their lives. And you're telling me, Pastor, that God is our refuge. Wasn't he their refuge? Here's your answer. I'm bringing it. Here is your answer. We cannot know all the ways of God. I believe the hymn writer says he moves in mysterious ways, his wonders to perform. Paul says we see through a glass dimly and darkly. There are some things that he does that we just do not understand. There are some things that are inexplicable. And I'm not going to tell you that things may not happen that you cannot understand and certainly you can't explain and I can't either. When those things happen, this is what we have to do. We have to realize that God is too wise to ever make a mistake. He's too just to ever be unkind. And this will, you can put in your, in, in your bank and take this with you. If God allows it, whatever it is that happened didn't surprise him, it didn't ease up and slip up on him, if it happened to us as a believer, it was in his permissive and possibly even his perfect will. We may not understand it. I can't explain why your mama died like she died. I can't explain why your dad died like he died. I can't explain why you lost your husband or your wife in the way that you did. I can't explain some of the things that happened in our lives, why the accident happened. But one thing I can tell you is that if you have the cancer, if, if you had the heart attack, or if you had the disease, or if you experienced the trauma, what Whatever it is, God allowed it in his permissive will. And you can best believe that he's going to get the glory from it. And at the end of it, I, I know it sounds strange to you, but at the end of it, it's going to work out for your good. We just have to trust him. We just have to trust the process. When we can't trace him, we have to trust him. When we can't track him, we have to trust him. When we can't understand it, we have to just say, Lord, I still know and believe that no matter what happens in my life, you are my refuge, you are my fortress, and I'm going to keep on depending and trusting in your word. Because here's the reality, brothers and sisters, and I believe some of you all can testify with me as I move to this third point, that God has done for you in your life what no one else could do in your life. There are times that he brought you out that it looked like it was impossible. But he proved himself in an amazing way. He did the amazing for you and brought you out. You know, you know, I, I, this is not in my notes, I promise you, it's not, it's just in my head. You know, I've looked at some members and some people, and I tell you, I've been to their hospital bed, and it looked like they were really going to be out for the count. I got to tell you, I prayed anyway and believed God, but it looked like they didn't look good. But God raised them up. There have been those... Look like you should have been all right. But God said, come on in. We can't understand that. But what we can do is realize that God is working it out. And the enemy is not going to win. God is going to get the glory. And it's going to be to honor him. And we're going to praise him. Listen to what this psalmist says, and I'm, I'm on this third point. There is a place of deliverance, not only a place of refuge and a fortress, but a place of deliverance. Look at this deliverance. He says that it is I, I am God, 
who will deliver you. So do not be afraid, says verse 5, of the terror by night, of the arrow that flies by day, the pestilence at darkness, or the destruction that wastes at noon. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not approach you. The Lord is saying to the nation of Israel, I'm going to take care of you through all of these things, through pestilence, through disease, through enemies. I'm going to take care of you. You have no need to fear, no need to worry. And then he moves on to verse 9 and 10, which is where I want to land here. For the Lord, you've made the Lord my refuge, even the most high my dwelling place. No evil will befall you, nor will any plague come near your dwelling. When the plague come, when I allow the plagues, they will not uh, affect and impact you. Why? Because you're under my wings. You're under my protection. This is a metaphorical expression of, of, a, of a bird covering, covering uh, the little chickens. <laughs> now, I'm going to share this little funny thing that I'm pressing on to, to this point about a place of deliverance here. You know, they have said that in my early ministry, um, very, very young, even before I started preaching some 30 years, well, yeah, almost 40 now, some 30 years ago, uh, that I preach to the chickens. That's really not true. <laughs> the reality is, is I really didn't like them. Now, I didn't do like my brother. I'm, I'm ratting him out. I didn't do like him and kill some of them. <laughs> These were my aunt's chickens. She probably thought I did, but I didn't. It was him. Although I didn't like them. And I still do not like crowing roosters early in the morning. I know that's what they do, but I do not like it. Now, the hen covers her little chickens with her wings. This is what I'm getting to. Covers them with her wings and protects her chickens. An eagle covers her little eaglets with her with the expanse of her wings. Just like that, God covers us with his wings. Oh, I know it's metaphorical and you can get it now and, and see it. God covers us, he covers us with his wings, with his feathers, with his tendons. God covers us. This is an anthropomorphism that recognizes God as having some type of figure uh, like, a, like an animal or like a mankind would have. God covers us. The whole point about it is, is that he covers you. He keeps you under his care. Yes, he does. And under his care, we find a time and a place of deliverance. No evil will befall you when you are under his care. And under his care, God will not only protect you, but God will deliver you. I sure do want to ask you. Has God ever delivered you from some things? You know, not only has God delivered us from some things, but God has delivered many of us through some things. Oh, brothers and sisters, I know, I know we want to avoid and avert some issues and crises and trauma in our lives, but there's, there's times that God allows us to go through just like the three Hebrew young men. They went in the fire. I used to hear the, the preachers a long time ago say that the Lord took the fire and the smoke out the furnace. No, he didn't. They came out, that, that fire was on fire seven times as hot, and when the Lord delivered them from the fire, they came out and didn't even smell like smoke. God can deliver. Sometimes he delivers us out of it. Sometimes he delivers us through it. 
scratch. Sometimes you just have to go through some things. But whatever it is, just know no evil will befall you. He will deliver. And when he delivers, brothers and sisters, he delivers right on the time. There have been some times that God has delivered me personally, and I tell you, he delivered right in the nick of time. It seemed like I was going to drown, just like I was in that 10 feet of water. I wasn't going to drown then, but, but it seemed like I was going to drown. But God delivered right on time. Have you ever been there when God delivered? Sometimes he brought you through it, and then he brought you out of it. The psalmist declares, I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears, Psalm 34 and 4. The righteous cry out to the Lord and he hears them, he delivers them out of their trouble, Psalm 34 and 17. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them from them all. No plague will come near your tent, no plague will come near your dwelling God will deliver and see you through. So not only will he deliver but lastly in this text I appreciate the fact of angelic presence. Angelic presence. The angelic presence. The angelic protection of God. This text, this passage is messianic at this point in that it refers as a reference to the coming one, to the Messiah, to Jesus Christ. It refers to him. It is, as a matter of fact, if you go back into Matthew chapter 4, this passage is when Jesus Christ was being tempted by the devil himself and the devil told him, some of those temptations, you all remember those, don't you? The devil said, Jesus, if, if you got the power that you say you have and you're the son of God, I know you're hungry, you fasted 40 days and night, com command that these stones be made bread. Jesus said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Then he takes him again and shows him uh, all the, uh, shows him um, the, the, um, the leads him rather on the high temple and that's, that's the one I want to talk about next leads him on the high temple and says Jesus now if you're God that you say you are you're the son of God I know God's going to take care of you just like Preston is preaching 2,000 years later God's going to take care of you this scripture is one of the ones he quoted he misquoted it actually he said that the angels are going to give charge over you to watch you in all your ways, so go ahead and jump down. You know, and the Lord told that devil, do not tempt the Lord your God. But this is the passage, and this passage is a direct relation to that one that lets you know that you shouldn't tempt God, but here's the real deal. That we know that God dispatched his angel after the temptation to take care of Jesus Christ. And the reality is, is that not only does he dispatch his angels for Jesus Christ, but Jesus Christ dispatches his angels for us. See, you all should have said something right there. I said that he dispatches his angels to protect us. God will give his angels charge to protect us. As a matter of fact, I believe that all of us have protective angels. That the angels of God are around us because we've been in some things. Now lean in on this. We've been in some things that God didn't even allow us to. It wasn't God's permissive will. That was your will. You wanted to be where you were. <laughs> and it was a dangerous spot at a dangerous time. You may have thought it was all right, but it was dangerous. But do you know that God still allowed his protective angels to bring you out of that? <laughs> you all clap because you know you've been there. <laughs> you've been in that dangerous place. But didn't God bring you out with his protective angels? He keeps us and covers us. We, we sing the, the song, it's all day 
and all night. The angels keep watching over me, my Lord. And I'm glad it is like the old deacon would say when he would pray those fine prayers. The deacon would say that, Lord, you allowed me to sleep and slumber in the very image of death. And then you told an angel, dispatched an angel, and told that angel to touch my feeble body and allow my golden moments to roll on a little while longer. I don't know how you feel about it today, but I appreciate the fact that God dispatched an angel early this morning. Shook me and told me to get on my way. I appreciate that the angels of God rode with me and then rode beside me all the way here so that I could get here safely. Yeah. I appreciate that God did it for you too. Yeah. The angels watch over us both day and night so that no harm will come upon us. Thank God for his protective angels. Thank God for the presence of angelic beings and forces. That God has the power to watch over us and to keep us. Do you all also remember while I'm talking about this angelic power and force uh, that Jesus Christ was, was getting ready to go on uh, to the cross? And, and they said, do you know we have power over you, says Pilate and the other of ones who were interrogating him. I have the power. Jesus said, you do not have power over me. I can call a legion of angels to come and deliver me. Thank God for the angelic presence and the angelic beings who take care of us. All I'm trying to remind you today is that God keeps his promises. And that we have the promise of his protection. And under his protection, we have a safe place that we can go to. We have a refuge and a fortress. We have a place of deliverance. We have his angelic presence with us as they go with us and as they stand by us. I've got to close this message out now. Here is the conclusion. August M. Top Lady, 1776, reminds us that we have a rock in which we can go to. Rock of ages, cleft for me. Let me hide, oh, I can't do that this morning, myself in thee. <laughs> Let the water and the blood from thy wounded side which flowed be of sin the double cure. Save from wrath and make me pure. Nothing in my hand I bring. Simply to the cross I cling. Naked come to thee for dress. Helpless look to thee for grace. Foul I to the fountain fly. Wash me, Savior, or I die. Thank God for the place that we have. Thank God that we can go to him. And when we go to our great God, he will in no wise cast us out. Thank God that we have a hiding place. Thank God that we have a place of serenity. Thank God we have a place of security. Thank God we have a place of provision. Our God takes care of us. You don't mind if I do one more hymn, do you? And I'm really done with you. Be not dismayed. Whatever betides, God will take care of you. Beneath his wings of love abide, God will take care of you. Is there anybody here who will testify that God will do it? If you will trust him, he will take care of you. If you will trust him, he will make a way for you. If you will trust him, he will deliver you. If you will trust him, he will protect you. Can't nobody do it like God can. Isn't the Lord all right? If you know he is, say yes. Say yes.
trust him. Our most high God, can't nobody do it like God can. Reason why we celebrate him is because we know what he's done for us. And we stand on the very promise of our most high God. If you're here or if you're listening and you've not received Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, I submit to you that he died for you on a skull-shaped hill called Golgotha, Calvary, the place of the skull. They hung him high, dropped him low, stretched him wide. He died for us on that old rugged cross. Must Jesus bear the cross alone and all the world go free? The answer is a sure no. There is a cross for everyone. There is a cross for me. A consecrated cross I bear to death shall set me free. And then go home my crown to wear for there is a crown for me. John 3.16 declares that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would believe on him would not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him, but that through him he might be saved. You can believe on him if you believe. For whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you're looking for a church home, welcome home. We believe you found it. You had a great place. And you're not here by accident, but by God's divine providence. The choir is singing. The praise team is now singing. If you're standing in need of prayer, you can pray. We'll pray for you. Listen as they sing. thanks for your word on today we pray that it will continue to purposefully penetrate and permeate the hearts of people to change lives so that we're not the same Lord help us to trust you we believe just help us to trust you I know and we know that you are our protector and you are our provider. But when times come that we do not understand and we can't wrap our finite minds around, help us to trust you. Knowing that you have our best interest at heart. Meet every need now, we pray. Bless us and keep us now. Protect, 
in your protecting power and care. In Jesus' name, save those who are unsaved. Heal those who are hurting and diseased. Bless those who stand in need of a blessing and meet every need. In Christ's name, amen. Come on and put those hands together. Let's give our most high, awesome God a praise. He's worthy of the praise and the glory. He's always worthy of the praise and the glory. We can't praise him and we certainly can't thank him enough. We just can't do it enough. A couple of announcements, a couple of things I wish to share with you. I want to pass along to you again. Uh, those packets that you received, the little pack, uh, make sure that you share that with those at home, those uh, in your circle, those that you meet. You know, invite them not only to the church, but invite them to Christ. That's the most important thing because I believe, and you know it to be certain it's true as well, that if they come to Jesus Christ, they'll come to the church whichever church they choose. So let's get them, get people to come to Christ. That's, it's all about him lifting up the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. We're going to continue on Wednesday with our Bible study. We're having a great Bible study virtually. So continue uh, with that on Wednesday. Let us pray in advance for that. Let us be prayerful for our brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, there are those who are in uh, hospitals and various places of recuperation. Let's pray uh, for them that God will continue to strengthen their physical body. He is a healer and he is a deliverer and we want to be mindful of that. We're looking forward to the month of September. Uh, we want to celebrate uh, the church anniversary homecoming for the month. Amen. You can clap that. We want to celebrate that for the month of September, and I'll be uh, letting you know some of the great things that's going on. We'll have some guest ministers, guest churches during that month, and uh, we're just going to have a great time, a great time. I got some plans for that, so you'll know more about those in the uh, next week or so in the days to come. We will uh, reveal that or uh, inform regarding those things. Um, also, this is a special, special week, special weekend. Um, I'm, I'm excited for it, special weekend. Uh, 30 years ago, 30 years ago today, yeah, there it is, 30 years ago today, uh, there was a, a marriage there 30 years ago. And, uh, and she still looked good and, and looked wonderful. But... Uh, yeah, I'm going to tell you now, I, I had hair and muscles and all that stuff. I was <laughs> oh, Lord, down memory lane, man. 30 years ago, that was 30 years ago. So um, we celebrate 30 years of marriage. And uh, yeah, I think somebody should clap there. Uh, yeah, you should clap right there. That's... that's uh, you know, some people do not stay married. I've done several marriages. I started doing marriage ceremonies when I was in high school. And uh, I've watched a lot of folk. I know I've probably done a couple hundred marriages probably. And I, I haven't seen some folk didn't stay married a year. Not the ones that I've done. But I've seen some didn't stay married a year, six months, 30 days, stuff like that. Nevertheless, 30 years. Clap one more time for Sister Preston. She... For her, that is. She put up with me, tolerated me for 30 years. That's a long time. Amen. All right, the next thing is, uh, you also see, if you wish to make a contribution, you see, uh, yeah, we celebrate uh, her birthday there. Um, August the 23rd. August 23rd is her birthday. That's Sister Crescent's birthday. Um, yeah, uh, she doesn't mind me telling you. She don't mind me telling you. I tell you. Uh, 1962. 1962 is her birthday. Year. <laughs> 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 Amen. 
1962 is her birth year. And uh, come on and clap for her. Come on and clap for her. Happy birthday. That's on Tuesday. Happy birthday to her. Um, as we prepare to go, you do have uh, Prosperous 888 uh, for her. Uh, dollar sign Prosperous 888 if you wish to do uh, not donate but to share a gift, a love gift with her. You can do that for her birthday. Also, um, those who wish and we wish that you wish, um, meet, meet us in the fellowship hall after we after we uh, finish, uh, as soon as I get a benediction within the next three minutes, will you? Not, please don't go out that door. Come on, uh, and let's go to the fellowship hall. Uh, amen, those who are in person, we appreciate you doing that. All right, um, it's giving time. Woo! Amen. Yeah. We want you to, to give as the Lord has blessed you to give. God has been so good, he's so faithful. And he's so kind, and we want you to share your love gift and uh, amen and share that with not only share that, but pay your tithe and your offering. I'm going to give you a couple of quick scriptures, and then we're going to give the benediction. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall he cause men to give into your bosom. For whatever measure you meet out, it'll be measured back unto you. He'll open up the windows of heaven, pour you out blessings that you will not have room enough to receive. God is faithful. He's not slack concerning any of his promises. If he says it, he will do it. He will perform it. You can believe him and trust him to do what he says he will do. He will not fail you, and he certainly will not let you down give as he's blessed you to give. For those who are virtual, if you would like to give, you can give by sending your offering, your tithe to the church. 1125 East Red Bird Lane, Dallas, Texas, 75241. And you can give uh, online through the GiveLify app, Bethine Baptist Church GiveLify app. Uh, that's the GiveLify app, Bethine Baptist Church, Dallas, Texas. And uh, you'll be able to make your contribution. Many people do and have, so we encourage you uh, to give that way as well. Those who are in person, we're standing and we are prepared to go. I want to give you uh, the closing prayer and benediction. Lord, thank you now for the givers. Thank you for each gift that has been given. Thank you, Lord, for those who may wish to share in love and appreciation to to the pastor and or certainly to Sister Preston you want to share, we pray that you would uh, bless them, bless them immensely for, for their gift, for their sharing. Thank you for those who may wish to share in any way. And Lord, thank you for those who are giving in this tithe and offering. We pray that you would bless it. And Lord, because of their faithfulness to you, you are faithful give back and restore back unto them. Meet every need. Keep us, cover us, protect us, guard and garrison us as only you can do. For the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. I pray that you're blessed in the city and the field going out and coming in. And I pray that you will walk in the promise of God's protection in Jesus name amen God bless you thank you for joining us stay well stay blessed until next time